Phase World Podcast helps independent creators live their creative and financial freedom. I'm your host, Fei Wu, and I'll be taking you through a series of interviews with creators from around the world who are living life on their own terms. Each episode is packed with tactics, nuggets you can implement, origin stories to make listening productive and enjoyable. We're not only focused on the more aspirational stories, but relatable ones as well. We also have non-interview-based mini-series releasing throughout the year to help deep dive into topics such as freelancing, marketing, even indie filmmaking that will benefit creators like you. Show notes, links, and ways to connect with the guests are available on phaseworld.com. Now, on to the show. Hey guys, this is Faye again, and welcome to our podcast. Today, I have a very special interview podcast to bring forward for you guys. Uh, Meanwhile, keep in mind that we also have mini series launching at the same time, and it's called How to Freelance, which helps you if you're a creative entrepreneur, artist, will help you level up so that you can thrive in your financial and creative life. Today, I welcome two new circus artists, Sabine von Rensberg and Bryn Shokov to Phase World. How do we find ourselves to Sabine and Bryn, you may be wondering. Well, the Circus Network is quite a fantastic one. Through the artistic director of Seven Fingers, her name is Shayna Carroll, who has appeared on episode 137 of the Face World podcast. So Shayna recently created another show called Passenger, and that happens to be premiering and opening in Boston on September 25th, uh, 2019. So I decided to reach out to Arts Emerson, the host of this show and an incredible venue, one of a kind in the United States. So check it out. Art Emerson is Boston's leading presenter of contemporary world theater. They're dedicated to engaging all communities through stories that reveal and deepen our connection to each other. I reached out to Darren DeLuca, a public relationship consultant at Arts Emerson. Darren selected two artists from the show. So special thanks to Darren who made this interview happen, not just anywhere, but inside the gorgeous Emerson Cutler Majestic Theater. The Majestic Theater was converted to accommodate this type of shows, uh, were shows in general in the 1920s and eventually into a movie house in the 1950s. I know there's so much history, so many different stories in Boston, I couldn't help myself. Okay, now let's talk about Sabine. Uh, she is absolutely lovely uh, and she's originally from South Africa and she's an aerial silk artist. Her parents started a circus school where she grew up. The rest is history. Sabine certainly embraced the opportunity she was born into and ended up at the Montreal Circus School. If you guys remember, we interviewed the executive director of the circus school and his name is uh, Eric Langlois. Uh, soon after graduation, Sabine found herself busy working for the Seven Fingers. Bryn was born and raised in Vermont, a jack of all trades type of circus artist. Um, So he is a circus artist as well as a visual artist where he produces video to help promote other artists. Every time I talk to young circus artists uh, about their schooling, I can't help imagining uh, Harry Potter. The reality of their life really isn't far from fiction, but there, there's real work. They train from 8 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m., followed by a short break and then homework. Academic homework. If that isn't discipline, I don't know what is. The National Circus School prepared them for a very high level of, of achievement while allowing them to continue to grow as artists. In this episode, we give you the insider's view into the life of young circus artists, the relationship they build, how they navigate work, life, travel, and beyond. And Shayna Carroll, the artistic director, has been interviewed uh, on this podcast. And the funny thing is the two artists, Sabine and Bryn, you know, speak so highly of her, not just an artistic director, but as a sister and as a friend as well. So, Thank you so much for listening. I know your time is precious, but I promise you, you enjoy this conversation. And if you could, 
please stop by. If you live in Boston, please come check out the show at Arts Emerson and follow other shows that they have available at this, um, you know, for this amazing company at this um, incredible venue. And if you're not in Boston, I highly encourage you to either go alone or find a family member or friend and check out a circus uh, show for the first time in your life. It will it will change your life forever. So without further ado, please welcome Sabine and Bryn to the Face World Podcast. I'm here with Sabine and Bryn, and please teach me how to say your name, especially your last name. <laughs> Both of our last names yeah. are a little complicated. So I'm Sabine van Rensburg. It's a Dutch origin, so that's why it's a little complicated to say. And my name is Bryn Schulkoff, and it's German. I have German descent. <laughs> wow, where are you guys? Where are you guys from? What's your origin? Uh, well, I'm originally from South Africa. My dad's South African, and my mom's French. And I was born and raised there until about four years ago, I moved to Canada to do the National Circus School there. Wow. Yeah. And I'm from Vermont in the United States. Uh, I lived there until I was 17, and then I also went to Montreal to attend the National Circus School five years ago. Wow. Both of you speak French. You sound like you speak French. Yeah. Yeah, we both. Uh, yeah, Sabine's fluent in French because her mom is French. Um, I've learned it throughout the years living in Montreal, but, you know, I would good. not say You're that I'm good. fluent. <laughs> What is it like to attend the National Circus School in Montreal? Because we had the pleasure to interview um, Eric Longlois. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's wonderful. I know he's still there. Um, yeah. And, I mean, what is it like to go to a circus school? Because it sounds very Harry Potter to the rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> it's actually rather intense. It's a really well-developed system that um, integrates you very quickly. So it's high-level training. We train from about 8 in the morning until 4 or 5 p.m. And then we have academic classes that go on until 9 p.m. at night. What? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's real university. It's not a... <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, it's very, very full-on. And I think, you know, it's not... It, the schedule is not designed for everyone. And mm -hmm. it takes time to, to get used to it and to, to learn how to take care of your body as yeah. well. Because your body is not... I mean, I, would, I was just self-training before coming to school. Mm -hmm. So to go from kind of zero to 100 mm -hmm. really took time for me to understand how to take care of my body, what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. Also, it was the first time I was living alone. alone <laughs> so how to cook for yourself, how oh, to just man. care for yourself as a person. I ate so many Oreos <laughs> in my first year. <laughs> Mostly cornflakes. Yeah. Cornflakes yeah. Corn corn and Oreos. <laughs> so it definitely takes time to, to adjust, but I think when you find find that that flow in the school and also the motivation then yeah. then it's a really great program to to grow and blossom yeah. not only as like a, an acrobat but also as an artist yeah so, the yeah. community is also it becomes family and that is what really transports you through those tough three years yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah there's so many gems to what you just talked about and and i think it's so interesting now you guys are grown-ups and you're performing mm -hmm. you've graduated and i know that i find each of your journeys to be really unique and i love the videos that you produced thank for, you for all the acrobats yeah i started watching yours and then i was like i wish you know Bryn talks a little bit more about himself like where can i learn more about him? <laughs> you know yeah i'm just the man behind the camera <laughs> <laughs> what you said you have to basically kind of take care of yourself, cook for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, is it because you literally you're 17, 18, and then you move into a dormitory, or do you just an apartment? An apartment. Actually. Yeah, you find roommates through the school, or the school, some people. The, the school, school provides a residence. Yeah, there is a residency program. Usually, it's for the high school students that are um, under 18. So. Yeah, who are under 18, but often the college students will just go off and find their yeah. own apartment and live together. And, what was the first year, first six months like? Because your body is going through such mm -hmm. transition. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the workload becomes really intense. And so I developed like a lot of muscle, for example, because I was training so intensely. Um, but I think emotionally, it's a bit of a different journey for each person. It's really particular to person to person. But, I um, find when you first get there, it's a lot of 
like over <laughs> but overwhelming like excitement and yeah. I remember being so distracted in my classes because I just wanted to watch everyone yeah. like I had never been surrounded by such talented yeah. people yeah. and I were training in this in the these space. huge rooms, the rooms where you can just amazing. watch everyone and I would just be like trying to do my thing and then, <laughs> and then I'm just like looking over I'm like oh my god that's amazing what, you, what they're doing especially and, the years above you really admire yeah, the other you, artists yeah, and exactly. that really developed a style and um yeah Oh, totally. So, oh, over the years, you get used to it, and you know, you find your flow. But I, I would say at the beginning, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, I come from Vermont, and it was the first time living in a city as yeah. well, where you have everything at your fingertips to go see shows, to you mm -hmm. know, to do to do anything. You yeah. Know? Also, for so. me, um, in South Africa, there's no public transport really that's either safe to take or accessible. Mm -hmm. So having independence and freedom to go to the cinema on my own or to mm. do things like that I was it not was, have to listen to your parents yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was incredible it was really really freeing to be there mm -hmm. wow. Montreal has this incredible scene in Montreal I, I we were Adam and I attended the Montreal complete circus, yeah, yeah, yeah. circus, Cirque, circus yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. this year yes oh, oh great yeah. Yeah. I realized to actually make this art accessible to people they make they make it so cheap and affordable. Yeah. Yeah. And and therefore, I mean, literally we're among local people and yeah. people travel internationally. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it like? It's for me, it's difficult to comprehend. You know, what is it like for you to also come from a place perhaps that's not accessible? I don't think there's shows in Vermont mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's for kids either. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, I did Circus Smirkus as a kid, so that was only two months of the summer. And mm -hmm. if I did the camp, the, before that I did the camp, which was two weeks of the summer. So that was really my, like, my moment to just push. <laughs> yeah. And other than that, I was training gymnastics, but there wasn't any anybody pushing me in that field. So it took a lot of, you know, self motivation and watching videos mm -hmm. and kind of just also understanding like is this really what I want to do at a certain point when I was questioning if I auditioned for the school because you know I didn't have the environment around me mm -hmm. so I think once you step into the environment just coming from kind of nothing most of my year it really became this Exactly, like I said before, overwhelming, like wanting to do everything and experience mm -hmm. everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. So And Montreal is really an epicenter and a hub for circus arts. There's so many companies, so many artists that circulate mm -hmm. through there. During the summer, we met mm -hmm. a bunch of artists mm -hmm. from Europe, which is also such a beautiful exchange to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, And I think what's also cool is that the art worlds in Montreal kind of intertwine. So mm -hmm. there's a big dance scene as well, mm -hmm. of course. And... Um, actually, there's a program called Adizam in Montreal, which connects all of the art schools. And so we would have different events where each school kind of presents something. And then mm -hmm. there's kind of meet and greets after. And I've like made so many friends mm -hmm. just through that as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that there is a really like strong art scene in Montreal and especially for young people mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that like makes it very motivating, motivating and inspiring to create mm -hmm. with different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it could be a very distracting place. I find Montreal to be distracting when it comes to food, culture, mm -hmm. theater, yeah. and obviously shows. And you guys, uh, you said, I have to go back to it real quick, which is you train physically from, you know, 8 a.m. to 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a lot because when I go to like a dance class, like a Zumba class for an hour, I'm like I'm <laughs> done. Like if we go like twice a day, we're heroes. Um, but then you have to go do all the academic yeah. curriculum, like. Is that even, is that possible? Or like, how, how does that work? <laughs> what do you do, you know? Yeah, somehow, I, I don't think I could do it now, honestly. But in the moment, we made it work. Um, I mean, the academics are definitely hard in a different sense. I think yeah. because it's so physical all day, there's kind of this, this you're wanting to also use stimulate the, your brain. stimulate your yeah. brain in yeah. a sense, because, you know, often you're just in a totally different mentality when you're training. So yeah. I think it is hard and it's very exhausting at the end of the day once you've trained all day to go and sit down. But it's important and you need mm -hmm. to be there and you're mm -hmm. happy to, like, be kind of still growing in that sense or learning yeah. something. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And some of the classes are really applicable to what we do. For example, we did... Um, anatomy mm -hmm. and like music and rhythm and, and there's also like circus history class yeah, the where circus the, history was where incredible. the teacher's changing often every like three or four weeks and it's on it's 
focused on something different mm -hmm. each time. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have the basics, um, like English and French literature, um, philosophy, and. That's, yeah, it. that's it. Yeah. Mostly taught yeah. in English or French or both. So we're split into two groups. There's the French group and the English group. Um, but the French people have to take English second language, and the English people have to take French second language. Yeah. So. But some of the classes are taught French. Yeah. Primarily. Generally, in our second philosophy and third year, philosophy was taught in French. In French. But that's because it's and our anatomy. second year. And anatomy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So once, after the first year, they give you kind of like a leeway. They're nice to you, and then straight from the second year, they only speak French mm -hmm. to you. <laughs> Well, wow. yeah. And yeah. You, you speak French fluently because yeah. of your mom? Yeah. So she raised me speaking French. And yeah. Wow. It helped a lot. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I think in that context, it's a good push because Montreal is so bilingual mm -hmm. that it, often I feel like it is hard to learn French if mm. you're not pushing yourself. Mm. So actually, I really appreciated when teachers would just speak to me in French and not go easy and say, oh, you don't understand, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll accommodate to you. Because mm -hmm. then you don't learn. Then you, you're never put in that. Um, that environment of needing to push yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like the first year I lived in Montreal, I was kind of you know, was nervous and shy to speak French and would go out and I would you know, start to speak French, but they would be like, dude, I speak English. And, yeah. and like, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and so you don't learn. And it's nice to, for the people that really put you in that situation, yeah. okay, we're going we're gonna to do this together. You know? mm -hmm. I'm not attacking you. But yeah. And have the patience to teach yeah, you. Yeah, exactly, it takes and have time. the patience. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Fei Wu and you're listening to Fei's World. Today I have Sabine and Bryn from Seven Fingers. They're circus artists who recently graduated from the National Circus School in Montreal and joined one of my favorite circus companies called Seven Fingers from Montreal. They're touring their new show directed by Shayna Carroll called Passenger. And the show is premiering in Boston. If you live in Boston or happen to travel here in the near future, please come check it out. Mark your calendar September 25th through October 13th, 2019. It will change your life. Now back to the show. I'd love to talk about the transition from school to be on being on stage mm -hmm. because... I know as a student at National Circus School, you get to perform as part of the Montreal Circus Festival, but as mm -hmm. well as mm -hmm. like other events. So how well prepared and conditioned do you think you are? Yeah, well, we were pretty lucky. We were both performing as kids. Mm -hmm. um, my parents have a circus school in South Africa. So I was, my first show, I must have been about six years old. So I kind of went from the stage to the school and then back onto the stage. Oh, wow. yeah, um, well. yeah, which was a really actually great experience because you have this huge baggage of performance skill and then you kind of slow down with performance skill and really focus on the technical aspect of what you're doing mm -hmm. physically um, and then you come back on stage and you've got like a whole new level and a whole new dimension to your performance so mm -hmm. yeah yeah in school I think there's a lot of times where you know you're exhausted and you're training and it's and it's easy to forget why you're doing it mm -hmm. and I think having the experience before or performing throughout school really, you know, reminds you why you're there and why you're training and what it's for. And so to, to finish each year, do the end of the year performance or perform in Les Minutes over the summer or just mm -hmm. in whatever context, it really gave me like affirmation every single time. Like, okay, yeah, this is why mm -hmm. I like kind of, you know, maybe push through the year and it was hard at times but like it was worth it because like I'm getting to where I want to get to yeah. and the transition for us straight from school into a contract we were super fortunate mm -hmm. not everyone has it so easy some mm -hmm. people struggle a little bit basically from our end of year shows we had a few weeks off and, and then we started show. the creation of the show which is four and a half months that we did in full creation mm -hmm. nine to five. Mm -hmm. Was it the passenger? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. It exactly. was the show. That yeah, we so that was see. last yeah. summer that we that we did the creation starting in July and then we premiered in November. Mm -hmm. But for me as well, I think the school often becomes very, you have all these people who are supporting you and your creation and, and your development as an artist. And for me, what was also really interesting to start the creation mm -hmm. of Passager was to kind of switch that mentality of really being again in the group dynamic yeah, and, team and <laughs> as, as a team player and also, you know, creating for someone else's vision as the director and, you know, really following her. And I think 
that that definitely took a moment for me personally to to switch that and be like, okay, I'm not gonna necessarily approach this the way that I would approach if I was making a number for myself in school. But this is like a group context, mm-hmm. and even though we're creating, we need to to think about it in that like in that sense, sense, in the global yeah. sense of mm-hmm. of what the purpose of the show is and what, sh- what really like kind of dive into Shayna's head of like what she's seeing, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. But yeah. it like definitely takes the acknowledgement to just say, okay, yeah, we're not in this in this same context now. I love Shayna Caro. We interviewed her. <laughs> I love her too. <laughs> <laughs> I know she I mean first of all, what is it like to work with her? I'm curious. Because oh, I only awesome. interviewed her. <laughs> she's such a passionate woman and she's able to transfer her ideas that are in her head so well verbally that I feel like we really understand everything she's trying to mm-hmm. get across. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's so supportive of letting us speak and letting us put our input in the show as well. And it's really a collaboration with her. Yeah. Yeah, for me, what was really special was, you know, almost the first month of our creation. We would go in each day and we would just sit down for at least an hour and just like talk and tell stories and you know you could really tell I think it was honestly my one of my first experiences where you could really feel that the director cared about us as person and who we are and not just like our our skills and our like what we're there to do kind of and I think that that really created uh, a sense of just community and like trust. safety and trust yeah. and mm-hmm. feeling like comfortable with each other and mm-hmm. I mean some of us had gone to school together so we already had that comfort but just kind of in this new group in this new context mm-hmm. really creating that sense of trust that like made the whole creation just yeah. like burst once she we started. She took me trick-or-treating for my first time when I was uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20, 20 years old. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't exist. More. The culture doesn't exist in South Africa. And so I was like, oh, I've never been trick-or-treating. So her and her daughter were like, oh, you have to come with us. So and we went to a, the Lantern Festival yeah, as well yeah. with, with her and her daughter. Yeah, she really so. has like adopted us into the family. And mm. it's, she's not only our director, she's a a friend and a mother and a sister. It's amazing. It's and I think that's kind of the mentality of the whole company as well. Yeah. It's this really, yeah. like, family, family-oriented, family you know, yeah. like, you know, really yeah. creating that that sense of community, which I think is, which is really special. It's tough for them to do because the company's growing and it's so successful. Yeah, yeah. but that for me is even a motivation to just do the show, exactly. you know, like, yeah. consistently. It's like, mm-hmm. I know that I'm working for really, really good and special people and that mm. makes me want to do my job well yeah. you know to, and, to yeah. we also get to be with the people that are pioneers in our field like for example a doctor will never really meet the person who invented you know the x-ray or anything like that whereas I get to meet the person who pretty much pioneered this my discipline so oh, it's yeah, yeah Isabella Chasse Isabel. was the person who pretty much right. started aerial silks mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. I'm working with her every day you know it was it's really really mm. amazing yeah and that's another thing that's special about the company is often uh, other circus companies have directors or choreographers come in to to create their shows but the seven fingers I'm pretty sure Every single creation has mm-hmm. come from the founders of the company. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Shayna and Gypsy have directed a lot of the shows, and Seb and, and, Seb and Pat Sam. and Isa and Sam. Like they've all done the the creations. So, mm-hmm. so I think that that's really special as well. Yeah, yeah it's so intimate. Yeah. And the reason why, in addition to the fact that your art is so interesting, and we're going to get into that <laughs> about your <laughs> particular styles. I know mm-hmm. you have like multiple skills and mm-hmm. um, trying to learn how to say them last night. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, I love the culture. And I remember touring the Seven Fingers new headquarters in Montreal mm. very recently, like Beautiful. two weeks ago. It's surreal because I think about these women independently. I mean, there was some some men involved as well mm-hmm. who really were very instrumental um, to, the, to the foundation. But it's like... Like, think about just a few people in their literally back then in, in their living room trying mm-hmm. to figure out how this will work together. And and then you walk into this, like, mm-hmm. majestic <laughs> place. How does that make you feel as such young people in your early 20s to realize that, you know, back in the day, very little, so 17 years ago, there were social media, mm-hmm. not as much. Mm-hmm. And you could probably imagine a few women get together with you know, young women and later in life they had children and whatnot. 
probably there are people not being super supportive about <laughs> your seven fingers idea. Oh, please, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I think that that's what they said in their party that they some people were like, oh, seven people collaborating, it'll never work. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's seven people who really know how to speak their mind, and each week they still have meetings, the seven of them, to make sure they're all on the same page. So, yeah, and they're so involved in the company and yeah. all the decisions all mm -hmm. the time. Of course, it's you know as it's as the company is growing so fast and with this like new building and everything, you know it's it's hard to stay on top of everything. But I think they they really, you know, mm -hmm. are there and present in mm -hmm. all of the decisions that are being made, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you guys, like, how does that change your perspective on success? or wow. fulfillment, or the trajectory of your creative life? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, like, for me personally, when I was in school, this was, like, this is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> this was the goal. It was, like, now you know, I've already... I, you know, it. I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I saw all these Seven Finger shows while I was in school, and I was, you know, so inspired, and it's a reason that I wanted to pursue circus, for sure. Mm -hmm. And so to be given that opportunity so early in your career is very... <laughs> I don't even know. It's just very special. And, you know, it's. I remember going into the building for my first meeting, and, you know, I walk in, they offer me a coffee, and I'm just like, and I'm still in school at this time, and I'm just like, what's happening? Like, is this, you know, it's like, feels like you're a new person. Yeah. Um, I think we're still riding that wave. That's why we're like, we're just going to enjoy this while, it, while yeah, it's here, and yeah. we'll think about the future maybe a little bit later. Yeah. No, but, but it definitely makes you very grounded in the sense yeah. of, not, you know, now we really understand these people and we understand why we're here and what the what the goals and motivations of the company are. And it's but for sure, it, it, it does kind of spark this fire to want to create something not equivalent to that, but inspired from it and seeing these people that it is possible and I can do it too kind of mm -hmm. attitude towards it. You know, like, I think we all do have that and it just waiting for that opportunity to share your own story, and I think people have to ask you those questions and give you that space and time to actually think through it. Hi guys, this is Fei Wu and you're listening to Fei's World. Today I have Sabine and Bryn from Seven Fingers. They're circus artists who recently graduated from the National Circus School in Montreal and joined one of my favorite circus companies called Seven Fingers from Montreal. They're touring their new show directed by Shayna Carroll called Passenger. And the show is premiering in Boston. If you live in Boston or happen to travel here in the near future, please come check it out. Mark your calendar September 25th through October 13th, 2019. It will change your life. Now back to the show. Um, I would love to talk about your art. So we'll maybe start with Sabine, mm -hmm. who is a aerial silk yeah. artist. Mm -hmm. So tell us what that is. And um, it's basically two pieces of long material. It's polyester, actually, with what it's made of, um, and it hangs from the ceiling. You could do about I don't know. It's in feet here, right? Thirty-six feet, thirty-two feet <laughs> is the length know. of it generally. Um, and basically, you can intertwine yourself and tumble down it. Um, and I've started kind of developing a new, not a new way, but a different way to use it. Instead of wrapping and tumbling down, I try to do release moves, where it means that um, using a tempo, I kind of let go and recatch myself with, with my hands mostly. Um, Which is really, really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the video. And so I'm really enjoying pursuing that kind of direction. I'm following that and seeing where it takes me. And I'm meeting a lot of incredible artists through that avenue. So... It's quite challenging because um, when you catch and release, like re uh, catch release something, it's not always successful. Mm -hmm. So to put it in a show context is quite a challenge. So um, when I perform, I generally don't perform all of my highest level tricks. I try to push myself as much as I can. But also in the show, I have no um, safety mat under me. Mm -hmm. So definitely I limit <laughs> myself in terms of safety. It's also a difference between doing a number and doing a 90-minute show. Show, she, exactly. You know, she has to do... Exactly. So when you have to um, conserve your energy for an hour and a half mm -hmm. um, at 100%, you obviously have to you know, calm down and, and be on reserve a little bit. 
kind of where, where I'm going. I've also recently started working um, in a duo with uh, Sereno, who's in the show, in Duo Trapeze, which I'm absolutely loving. He's um, such an incredible human to work with, and really we're on the same wavelength. So, mm. yeah, that's kind of my projects uh, at the moment. And I also think it's really important to have personal goals within the show context, but also um, outside the show context. Mm -hmm. So I keep trying to work and create whether it's for the show or for myself in the future. So. What is it like when you hear that applause and when people talk to you about your work? Oh, man. It's such a boost of adrenaline. When I finish the show, I'm not able to tie a shoelace or write a sentence. I'm, like, shaking with energy. Um, and for sure, it's that feeling of gratification, but also a feeling of, um, we call it in French partage, so a sharing moment between the public and the performing it's we've kind of bombarded them with information for an hour and a half and it's finally their turn to kind of reciprocate that energy with applause yeah and it's actually great we've kind of been discovering in Moscow there was this culture that they would buy flowers before the show and they would give the flower to their favorite performer and so it kind of is like a way to develop taste and it's what the kids kind of choose and they point at you and they give you the flower in yeah and then in France they give like a rhythmic clap um, in Montreal, it's a standing ovation immediately. It's like all these different cultures of how to show appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's been so interesting traveling and learning about it. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So, Brim, we'll move on to you. I know you have three things going on, like... Yeah. Is it called the Tide Wire? I got lots Cereal. going on in my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so my main... Like, in school, my main discipline was Tide Wire, um, which is what I graduated with, and I started doing that. I started as an acrobat mainly, and throughout my experience of um, performing in Circus Smirkus, they would always have a backstage wire just kind of set up that people could play or train on, or the you know for the people to warm up for the number. And so I kind of just started you know going back there and playing on that and trying to learn the tricks that that the people or my friends were doing in in the show and through that just decided to get my own little rig and you know I kind of just never stopped I <laughs> like just was really motivated to keep improving and you know I would for most of the year before coming to school I would just have to watch videos on YouTube mm -hmm. of, of tricks and how do you guys fall in love with like that's my thing that's my jam oh you gotta try everything I yeah. don't know like I definitely am not a juggler I know that <laughs> yeah. no I think at first I mean well we both come from youth circus, youth circus where, yeah. which is great where you're really involved you know you really have that opportunity to, to try test, everything yeah. and see what what fits for you not everybody mm -hmm. who comes to the school has that experience if mm -hmm. they've come from dance or gymnastics and the school kind of um leads them in the path saying, yeah. oh, maybe you'd, if you're a dancer, you would fit in this, you would fit in yeah. steer wheel or tight wire. Depending blah, blah, blah. on body type and mm -hmm. flexibility and strength, mm -hmm. you kind of fit into a different category. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. But, um, I mean, I auditioned for school on tight wire, so at that point I was really confident um, that that's what I wanted to pursue and go for and felt like it just fit right for me. Um, I think that I changed a lot. My mentality of the discipline changed a lot throughout school in terms of, like, what my goal was. I think for most people, when you get to school, you're kind of like, I want to be the best, you know? Like, that's the goal is I want to have the best tricks and the highest skills, and I just want to be the best, you know? And I think that that really changed for me throughout school of, you know, finding finding my relationship with tight wire and my discipline and what was important to me. Um, I didn't have any dance background before, but I got really inspired by dance when I moved to Montreal and would just go to see, you know, the best dance shows in the world that were, you know, coming and at mm -hmm. our fingertips. So that motivated me to really take the time to improv a lot in school and to just mm -hmm. dance on my own. And we had dance class as well, but I found there was a really strong connection for me between that like sense of movement and finding mm -hmm. my body and what tight wire was becoming for me. And so there is obviously this really like technical aspect of like needing to stay balanced and stuff. But I started to go into this direction more of of the intention and the and the movement quality. Um, so there is that really like technical aspect that you know every step you have to be you have to be there and you have to be really present. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's what's really interesting about the discipline for me. Yeah, so tell us maybe a bit about the show. I think I need to let you guys go in a few minutes. So like what what's your feeling? Like I don't know whether it's even possible to give things away if there's a <laughs> plot. Well, I don't yeah, know. we weren't told anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Um, well, basically, this, the story, I guess, of the show isn't exactly linear. 
Um, but it's really a global sense of uh, reasons why people travel or leave a country or go towards a place. Um, and we really kind of try to touch on all the themes that are surrounding traveling. So, uh, for example, there's my favorite scene in the show is um, just before Bryn's act, we're playing with our reflection in the window of a train. And I find myself doing that in real life and not just on stage. Like, I always look at my reflection in the train and it's kind of superimposed on the background of the, the landscape that's moving. And I really think it's, like, a thing that people can relate to that are watching the show. They're like, oh, if they've ever taken a train, they know exactly that moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of these ideas came from because, I mean, for Shana, she had, had a whole career of performing yeah. and traveling exactly. and touring and, you know, us as well have experienced it in little bits or have our own personal experiences mm -hmm. of traveling. And so a lot of these ideas come from come from that that experience of, okay, what is, what is traveling for you? Or, mm -hmm. you know, going to a new de destination and mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know what it's going to be, and there's that anticipation of, of yeah. leaving something that mm -hmm. you, you love and kind of going into the unknown. So mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. it is kind of this whole metaphor for life, in a sense, of what, what we experience and what everyone experiences. And I think that Shana's goal is really for everyone who's watching in the audience to, to take something, mm -hmm. to take their own thing out of it, yeah. of, like, what that means for them and what traveling and is for them and Can to kind of reflect on all of that <laughs> and then there's a bunch of acrobatics involved <laughs> thrown into it yeah. but that's just like a general synopsis of what the show is about mm -hmm. thank you so much for yeah. joining yeah. us i really appreciate it thank the you lovely story. Thank i'll keep you posted yeah, yeah. thank you so much for yeah. having us Bye. this episode of the face world podcast is brought to you by face world llc our marketing service agency created for independent creators and businesses. We offer website development, video production, marketing mentorship to people who want to tell better stories, level up, and create a profitable brand. Face World Podcast team, our chief editor and producer, Herman Ceballos, associate producer, Adam Leffert, social media and content manager, Rose De Leon, transcript editor, Alina Ahmidova, and lastly, myself, the creator and host of Phase World. Thank you so much for listening.